Drishti IAS is pleased to revise its special program, Mastering Mains Answer Writing, targeting answer writing in UPSC and State Services main examination. We will be alternatively covering GS papers 1, 2 and 3 through this program. For GS 4, please watch our program, Ethics, Definitions and Concepts. The link for it is mentioned in the description below. So what is the structure of the program? We begin by looking at a question, then narrow it down to the syllabus and assess the weightage of the topic. We learn on how to approach the question, structure the answer, write the actual answer, and we finally conclude the episode by looking at questions asked in the previous year examinations. Let us look at the question which we will be discussing today. Indian nationalism grew partly because of colonial policies and partly as a reaction to colonial policies. Discuss. The question can be narrowed down to modern Indian history, which is part of GS paper 1. The importance of the topic over the years can be assessed from the graph that has been displayed. Shifting towards how to approach the question. In general, there are two things we must understand with respect to question the underlying theme of the question and what is or are being asked about that theme. Now let us look at the question again. Indian nationalism grew partly because of colonial policies and partly as a reaction to colonial policies. Discuss. The underlying theme of this question is rise of Indian nationalism. About this theme, we have to discuss the colonial policies that led to the rise of Indian nationalism and the Indian reaction to them. To answer the given question, let us first understand the meaning of the command word discuss. Discuss simply means to cover broadly, mentioning strengths, weaknesses and positives and negatives, mentioning causes and consequences as well. Now let's focus on how to structure the answer. The first part of the answer will be an introduction, which will include a brief explanation of the Indian model of nationalism. The second part of the answer, that is, the body, will have two subparts, colonial policies that led to the rise of Indian nationalism and the Indian reaction to these policies. Lastly, in our conclusion, the impact of such policies on Indian freedom struggle. Now, we try to write the actual answer. But before we commence, we would like to make it very clear that the answer provided here is a representative answer, that is, how the actual answer may look like. It can be adapted or modified as per your own natural style of writing, whether paragraph form or short sentences or bullets or diagrams. We have also taken certain liberties with the word limit by including certain additional information in the answer for your comprehensive understanding. So, Without much ado, let us write. The Indian National Movement was a grand and prolonged struggle launched against British imperialism. Nationalism was the main ideology and the instrument with whose help the struggle was launched. In the context of the Indian Nationalist Movement, Indian Nationalism represented two major ideas, anti-imperialism and national unity. In other words, any person, movement or organization that practiced and upheld these two ideas could be considered a nationalist. Shifting focus on the colonial policies that led to the rise of Indian nationalism and Indian reaction to these policies. Beginning with colonial policies that led to the rise of Indian nationalism. Western education. When the British introduced Western education in India, they aimed at creating a class of educated Indians who could serve the British interests. However, the English language helped nationalist leaders from different linguistic regions to communicate with each other and create a sense of national identity. Modern Western education also propagated the ideas of nationalism, democracy, rights and freedom. Socio-religious reforms. These reform movements sought to remove social evils which divided the Indian society 
and this had the effect of bringing different sections together and proved to be an important factor in the growth of Indian nationalism. Modern Press The second half of the 19th century saw the rise of the modern press in India. It helped in often criticizing the British policies and bringing together people from different backgrounds by spreading awareness. Political Unity The political unification of the country necessitated by the convenience had a twofold effect. The economic fate of the people of different regions got linked together. For instance, failure of crops in one region affected the prices and supply in another region. Modern means of transport and communication, especially railways, brought people, especially the leaders from different regions together. This was important for the exchange of political ideas and mobilization and organization of public opinion on political and economic issues. Now looking at the Indian reaction to colonial policies. Rediscovery of India's past. The historical researches by European and Indian scholars created an entirely new picture of India's past. The theory put forward by European scholars that the Indo-Aryans belonged to the same ethnic group from which other nations of Europe had evolved gave a psychological boost to the educated India. The self-respect and confidence so gained helped the nationalists to demolish colonial myths that India had a long history of servility to foreign rulers. Rise of the Middle Class Intelligentsia British administrative and economic innovations gave rise to a new urban middle class in town. This class, prominent because of its education, new position and its close ties with the ruling class, came to the forefront. The leadership to the Indian National Congress in all its stages of growth was provided by this class. Racial arrogance of rulers, racial myths of white superiority were sought to be perpetuated by the British through a deliberate policy of discrimination and segregation. Indians felt deeply hurt by this. Example, Lytton's reactionary policies such as reduction of maximum age for the ICS examination from 21 years to 19 years. It became clear to the nationalists that justice and fair play could not be expected where interests of the European community were involved. However, the organized agitation by the Europeans to revoke the Ilbert Bill also taught the nationalists how to agitate for certain rights and demands. Lastly, looking at the conclusion. The British policies and the growing anger against the colonial government brought together different groups and classes of Indians into a common struggle for freedom. In a nutshell, we can say that Indian nationalism grew partly as a result of colonial policies and partly as a reaction to colonial policies. Now we look at the questions that have been asked in the previous year examination. In 2019, the following questions were asked. The 1857 uprising was the culmination of the recurrent big and small local rebellions that had occurred in the preceding 100 years of British rule, elucidate. Examine the linkages between the 19th century's Indian Renaissance and the emergence of national identity. In 2018, the following question was asked. Why indentured labour was taken by British from India to other colonies? Have they been able to preserve their cultural identity over there? In 2017, the following questions were asked. Examine how the decline of traditional artisanal industry in colonial India crippled the rural economy. The women's questions arose in modern India as a part of the 19th century social reform movement. What were the major issues and debates concerning women in that period? In 2016, the following question was asked. Explain how the uprising of 1857 constitutes an important watershed in the evolution of British policies towards colonial India. And in 2014, the following questions were asked. Examine critically the various facets of economic policies of the British in India from mid-18th century till independence. In what ways did the naval mutiny prove to be the last nail in the coffin of British colonial aspirations in India? What were the major political, 
economic and social developments in the world which motivated the anti-colonial struggle in India. With this, we conclude today's episode of Mastering Maine's Answer Writing. Until next time, stay safe. Thank you. To watch our videos in Hindi, subscribe to our Hindi YouTube channel, Drishti IAS.